Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Arsenal and Liverpool battle it out to a stalemate in a tense and tight affair at Anfield. West Ham put two past Manchester United as Eric Ten Hag struggles to get good run of games out of his side. Tottenham's two early goals is enough to hang on against a dangerous-looking Everton. And Aston Villa squander their Friday night chance to go top of the table but rescue a point against Sheffield United. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. OK, my friend, there is only one place to start. It was the big game um, ahead of the Christmas fi uh, fixtures. Uh, it was Anfield, it was Liverpool v Arsenal. It was a chance to go top of the table for whoever won the game. Um, mm. And it was Liverpool with Jurgen Klopp talking about a full Anfield experience, wanting to really test and challenge Arsenal, which in many ways I thought they did. First of all, Rob, what, what an... Super game of football, by the way. Yeah, it was a super game of football, Rob. And, um, you know, as, as much as I, I was looking forward f to a statement, I wanted mm. a statement, Rob, and I'm mm. greedy, right? We watch a game <laughs> like that and we, you know, we see Man City faltering a little bit and we're like, who's going to be the guy? Who's going to be the team that's mm. going to really grab this and run with it? And I, and I thought that Arsenal had a better chance of doing that and they didn't quite manage to do it. No. Neither did Liverpool. No. I thought it was a very even game. Mm -hmm. I think both teams had their periods of dominance where they were a little bit better. I thought Arsenal for the whole were better in the first half. I, th I thought the second half, Rob, Liverpool found a new gear yeah. and a new, a new level. Mm -hmm. And you see him clapping some... It was back to... A little bit of back to his crazy pressing, I thought, Rob, in yeah. the midfield. Just the first 15 minutes of the second half. A little bit more back to that heavy metal, which we haven't seen for a little while. And Arsenal got a little bit bogged down, Rob, trying to play through, trying to play around them to get the control that people like me wanted to see, Rob. Yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm, I'm a, little, a little disappointed in Arsenal because I thought they were ready mm. to, and, I, and I'll, I'll throw it back to you after this, Rob, ready to show their confidence, show mm. how much they've grown and play through that and match that physically and take control and really start to, um, I don't say dominate, but but but, yeah. but look the better side. There were periods in the first half I thought they did, mm. but the second half, they didn't, they couldn't against a Liverpool team that brought the energy in the second half that just, it just stopped Arsenal's flow. Um, what do you think to that, Rob? Um, do, do you think... Uh, I hear your yeah, point. Well, where, where I slightly disagree, Rob, is I would say... I don't think Arsenal have to be overly disappointed that they totally didn't dominate the game to win it because you're talking about the second mm. best team in the league. You're talking about a team who've mm. won titles not too long ago. It was a team that you know could go on to win it this year. And to, to, to get total dominance, to, to ha have... I understand what, what you mean in some respects to control you know, their ability to break through and create opportunities that might cause you a problem. Well, I, I, I think mm. that Arsenal can come away from, from the game, Rob, with a sense of, OK, we, we, can, we know we can do better, but I thought there was a bit of a maturity. Mm. I thought at times it mm. got physical in the middle of the port, Rob. I thought they stood there. I've got to go to him straight away, and people might think... Oh, Declan Rice, Rob, was unbelievable yeah. in, in that game. Best player he, on the pitch. Oh, by, yeah, by a mile, player. Rob. His composure. He yeah. was trying to control yeah. things. He was putting his foot in. He was covering centre-backs. Remember the time when the breakaway and Trent Alexander-Arnold hit to post? It was Declan Rice versus five Liverpool forwards. It looked like some kind of Hollywood bloody idol. He, like he pulled out a sabre and said, come on then, I'll take the lot of you on. It was like he was, he was, <laughs> he was in another yeah. mode. Um, I just thought, hey, yeah. he, Rob, I think in the second half of the season will get better. His importance will be, will be, be worse. I thought for Liverpool, and I'm going to pick, I'm, I'll pick two people out early. I thought uh, Zobersly, I thought, Rob, put in a performance that wasn't all his attacking and his shooting and his thing. I thought he worked unbelievably hard. I thought he put his foot in. I thought he got back into the right-back slot when Trent went on to give them cover. I thought he, he went 50-50 in, in the midfield. I saw another side to him that I think will make Liverpool better in, in, moving forward. Um, so I think both teams can come away. I, I, probably in terms of learning, I would say I felt... 
better for for Arsenal in that than I did for Liverpool. I think I know what Liverpool can be certainly at Anfield. I I understand what they can get to. I just thought Arsenal. There's an Arsenal team that would have lost there today, that, that would have crumbled under what was going on second half. But I thought they 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 hung in there and as a group they'll they'll be better for it. Rob, maybe I'm getting I'm getting a bit. Of a, of a flipping, maybe I'm getting a, a bit more critical as I get older, right? And I'm a miserable old git. When, when you're going over there, you're talking in a manner that's like, you know, Liverpool performances, Arsenal this and matured. Mm. And I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel like both teams in different ways disappointed me, Rob. And maybe this goes back to my kind of, I don't know, I wanted, I wanted one of them to show me they're the real deal. And I don't think yeah. either of them did, Rob. And I know well, what it's if it a isn't one of those games, Rob? Point what, for what if it isn't one of those great footballing type of games? What, what about doing it a different way? And, and in the end, they probably are, are quite similar in, in where, they, where they are. Do you know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. You want better control and better football and the rhythmical passing. I said a thing today, and I hope people understand what I, I think Arsenal are playing not quite as well as they were last year, but they're a better team this year. And, and that's kind of an interesting thing to say, like, well, how could they be not playing as well, but better? There's, I, don't there's know if something... I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're that much better. Yeah, I think I they are, I don't know if Rob. they're that much better. I think they are. I, I, I... Well, Declan, Declan Rice, uh, yeah. Declan Rice mm. makes, would make any team better. So yeah. in, in, that, in that area well, that, or that they're, position, they're, absolutely... You, you killed your own argument, if, if so. But, but these are the, no, the, the back two. The back two, well, I know if he stays fit, but the back two are better. Zinchenko, bit of an issue. Might need to, 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 to worry about that. I think the, the, the Havertz in Odegaard, not playing particularly well, but better, knew what they had to do today. Wide players. Martinelli's not quite on his game. Saka's not quite on his game. But they're, they're, they're making sure they didn't lose the game, Rob. Last year, they, they were losing these days when they weren't at it. I'm just thinking of a team, Rob, that's going to go and be a champion. Go and be a champion in this Premier League. And I think if Arsenal want to be champions, uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I, I'm, I differ from you, mate, in a couple of these spots. Yeah. Yeah, there's potentially, there's potentially uh, a better Arsenal team mm. given that Declan Rice is there. But Martinelli is a shadow at the moment. He's a shadow of, him, of his normal self, Rob. His numbers are nowhere near the same. Yeah. Kai Havertz has had a little flurry. He's got a couple of important goals. I like the way that he runs. When Gabriel Jesus is another one, by the way. Jesus isn't doing enough to be a champion team. Uh, I do like the way that when Abbott's, uh, sorry, when Jesus goes wide yeah. or deeper, mm. Abbott's goes forward. Mm -hmm. But other than that from Kai Habits, apart from keeping it very simple on the ball, I still want to see more from him. And listen, I know that he's, he's scored some goals recently. So potentially, Rob, and I agree with you that there's more to come from Arsenal, mm. but, you know, for, 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 to be champions, if you aren't having a goal scorer that's scoring 15 to 20 goals or more to be champions... The others, particularly the wingers, and we saw this with Liverpool, with, yeah. with Roberto Firmino, that got, I think, 15 was maximum. You got 11, you got nine. But you had wingers in, in uh, Mane and Salah that scored a ton of goals. Now, Arsenal have the potential to do that with Saka and Martinelli. Saka's Saka. Saka, like, great. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it, but Martinelli's off, bit off on the left-hand side. Yeah, the good. midfield kind of looking great and we all want to say Rob we all want to say this is it this is the midfield that he wanted yeah, and he did yeah. want this midfield I still want a little bit more from there so between the midfield with Habits, with Martelli off a little bit mm. with Jesus is one of his non-impact games Jesus is a, I either looks million bucks up there yeah. does something really good or has no impact in the game very little impact now of course Saliba being fit all season is going to make them a little bit better than dropping off last year yeah. do you know what I mean Rob do you know do you know where I'm coming from with Arsenal where yeah I there do. is that there but at the moment in a big game we didn't didn't but see the, it this, this this league this season Rob isn't going to be won by one team dominating and running away with it we've seen that City are yeah. going to lose more games it's going to be a, a, a flawed not flawed in, in a terrible way, but it's not going to be the perfect, the champion. Mm, the, maybe. So somebody's going to have to win yeah, it in maybe. a slightly different way. And Arsenal have to, uh, I thought today showed that they can. Arsenal will have better mm. football days mm. like they did against Brighton last weekend. And they will the football will get them going. Mm. But away from home, at Anfield, when it, it, it got hot, I thought they turned the gas up and, and stayed with it. And I thought, think... Going back on that coach, I would have a good feeling about the group. Yes, individuals can be better. Individuals can produce more, um, and, and they're going to need that. But I, I just felt that 
I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident with where they are, and I think Mikel Arteta would be pretty pleased with, with, with his team. There's, there's, there's a play, Rob, that happened midway through the second half that was a defining moment of the game. Yeah. And it's funny because I sat with my son watching the game and afterwards, you know, both teams, you know, there's a, there's a feeling of, OK, but yeah. if Trent Alexander-Arnold mm. scores, whatever yeah. minute it was... 72, um, 72. What minute was it? 72. Was it the second? 72 th minutes. That yeah, is an incredible chance for mm. Liverpool, for the yeah. home team Liverpool to, with of the mistake that was made in midfield... For, if. Well, yeah, with his quality with that right foot. And he had so many great passes in the game. If he slots that in, Rob, yeah, we're having a, I think we're having mm. a bit of a different conversation. And, yeah, and I know this, if, is, this yeah. is how it goes. Swings mm. and roundabouts, different games, different yeah. misses, different, you know. But that was such a... That could have changed the story and, and been so positive for Liverpool to win that, those three points and, and set them on their way to a, to a really strong title run. It, it, listen, you, you, you might be right, mate. And people might listen and, and watch and say... I'm being a bit picky there. I just thought that Arsenal, Rob, and this, this is my expectation of Arsenal mm. was to... I don't necessarily... And I know what you mean, Rob. I don't necessarily mean they're going to play Liverpool off the park yeah. at Anfield. But in the second half, when Liverpool turned it up, I just thought Liverpool, uh, Arsenal might deal with it a bit better than what they did. Um, they're on the back foot. They couldn't get their rhythm going again and they almost lost it with Trent going through there. Mm -hmm. So... That's my take, mate, and and it's one one, and you can't Absolutely. say it wasn't a fair result given everything that happened. Um, again, a better point for Arsenal, but I, I just I don't know. I just I just wanted more of a statement from one of the sides, well, and that's didn't why with the two Robbies, we come sometimes from different places. We, we yeah. often agree, and and, and yeah. you know it, it was one of those days where I don't think you could say anyone deserved it more than the other. If Liverpool take that chance, Arsenal created mm. one or two in the second half, probably not as many as, as they would like, but showed a different kind of a fight. Mm. And the top of the table going yep. into Christmas, mate. So um, yep. Yep. yeah, move on. Yep. Let's move it on to yeah. London Stadium. What have we got next? London Stadium, my friend. OK. We've got West Ham 2, Manchester United 0. So Man United off a 0-0 draw that felt like a win to some at United, and despite Liverpool having 34 shots. Um, you know, maybe a performance to start building something from. You know, you stop Liverpool winning at home, you stop Liverpool scoring. Um, you go to London Stadium to a West Ham team that have uh, got dumped out the League Cup on Wednesday 5-1. A little bit of criticism for mm. David Moyes for rotating and not taking it serious enough. A Manchester United team that have a week off to, to do some training to get themselves set up for a game. Um, and Manchester United come up short again, mate. Kind of the story of the season. Win a game, lose a game, draw, well, draw one. Yeah. But generally, I think they've won nine. Yeah. And lost eight, mate. They, 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 if they're at it some yeah. days or they get a bit of luck, they win. Otherwise, they lose. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a big story because of Manchester United, Rob, but it, yeah. it's the, basically the story of any mid-table team. Yeah. It's literally what they do. The, the, you know, that's what they do. They win some, they draw some, they lose some. And that's kind of where, where we're at right now in Manchester United. I know there's some in, in, injury issues. Um, and the story is that they're, they're a mid-table team. That is a story, given... The time that the mm. managers had there and, and the money that he spent and you know you're still sort of throwing together a team a little bit I mean I, I love young players bringing into the side yeah. and Willie Kambwala and centre back yeah. Rob seemed mm. to do a very good job to me yeah Look comfortable good in possession mm. I love that I mean yeah. I love seeing young players coming through yeah, three was teenagers, a big Rob, in, alongside in, the, Evans. in the lineup three teenagers didn't they yeah. with Garnacho and, and yeah. Um, Maynu yeah Maynu yeah, yeah. Mm. Maynou, unfortunate mm. for his, his mistake in the middle yeah. of the park. But that's a responsibility that position has, isn't it? It's a no... Yeah. You make a mistake in the holding midfield when, mm. you, when people are playing through you and under his foot. Um, it was a brilliant finish from Kudus, by the way. But yeah. that, that's, that was unfortunate for him. I mean, I, I don't think there's... You know, in, in some ways, Rob, there isn't a ton to add that we haven't said or, already. Anthony, again, always gets me making notes, mate. You know, we watch a game <laughs> and anything that stands out or whatever... Mm. And Anthony's usually uh, his second line. There was nothing. There was nothing. And, I, and I'll say this, Rob, I'll chuck it over to you. It, I think wide players, particularly young ones, particularly ones that, that, that know the manager very well in Eric Ten Hag, um, I think they're... I always look for improvement. A winger's kind, kind of... You can sit a winger down and say, listen, Anthony, OK, um, this is the numbers right now. Let's try and improve effective crosses. We used to do it it's a, in, in a coaching uh, in our coaching courses, Rob. We used to sort yeah. of like analyze players and 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 teach or learn how to develop players. And you'd write down a few numbers. I want effective crosses. I want assists. I want goals. 
you know, whatever metrics it is or, or interceptions defensively, you set a table up with four or five mm. and you work with the player to try and improve. You tell me, mate, what's improved about Anthony? What's improved about this guy from when he's been at the football club a while uh, now? Why is he not getting well, better? Well, I'll answer you a question with a question. Name me a player who's gone to Manchester United and improved. Because you, you're picking Anthony... I could pick you another five or six others. You buy Amrabat, mm. Rob. You, you, you've got him on the bench. You, 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 you've got so many players. I mean, Van der Beek's still on the bench, Rob. I'm looking, Van der Beek is still on the bench. Um, yeah. Marcus rashford has gone backwards. Let me talk to you about the centre-forward, Rob. Rasmus Hoyland. 14 Premier League appearances now, no goals. Um, I feel a little shorn of confidence now. He got taken off after 50 yeah. minutes. So basically, at half time, it was probably one of those Rashford, get yourself warmed up, you're coming on. 50 minutes, uh, Hoyland came off. Now, yep. as a young striker coming in at Manchester United, I think there's one of two things. And again, it's, it's personal. You may have a different view in terms of how you manage that situation. I either feel we've got to go with this guy, go through a bit of, of tough times and get him out the other side because I believe in him, I see him training, he's a goal scorer. We've seen moments in Champions League, but not in the Premier League. Or I go the other way and say he's a young player, he came in with a, with a couple of injuries there, I'm in a city and I'm going to bring him in at the right time to get him. But I thought today, and his face told a story, when he got taken off, Rob, I thought it really hurt him. And it, it hurt him because... Give him another 15 minutes, just see what happens. Does he have a moment? Does, you know, and it's a, not a team that creates. You say Anthony doesn't give him any service. Ganacho is a clever, had a few moments, but doesn't particularly, you know, give mm. centre forwards great service. Rashford come on and hardly had a, had a kick. I just feel, Rob, we've got to do one or other, the other with this kid. Or I think you've got to be careful he couldn't ruin him. Mm. No, it's interesting again, isn't it? No Premier League goals. I yeah. mean, that. You know, uh, he's got Bruno Fernandes behind him that, that can pick out runs yeah. and he's a brilliant, creative, uh, assisting player. I think the wide players, Rob, is, is interesting because, you know, I think wide forwards nowadays are, are tasked with, with scoring a lot more and, and, and are different to a few years ago where they're really there to, to cross and to link and to set. I think these, wide these players, two particularly two, Anthony Garnacho... I saw it. They've got one, one they, Premier League goal individual. between them. That was the wonder goal by Garnacho. <laughs> it's a wonder goal. So, so, yeah, so I, I know. Manchester United's I, it's, it's performances are based on individual brilliant moments without yeah. supporting, being supported by good football, any control, any kind of control of the game. Can I, can I, can I give you a little, a little quick comparison, Rob? In, in this, it's right on to your point. Yeah. How about a team that uh, are finding ways now to be a good team. How about Dominic Solanke, by the way? Sure. I think he's got 11 Premier League goals, Rob. Yeah, Dominic yeah. Solanke yeah. at Bournemouth. Mm. How has Rasmus Hoyland got zero at Man United? Yeah. How does that work? Jared, like, Bo it, Jared it, Bowen's it, got 11, Rob. Jared Bowen, who's a wide player playing for West Ham United, has got 11 Premier League goals. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's tough to do at the moment. The numbers and the performance of the Man United is tough to do. And, and we all know... The Jim Ratcliffe is mm, going to bring some yeah. money in and it's going to get 25%. Yeah. It's going to be ratified in the next few days, you know, and yeah. he's going to address the football side of it, which we both said, once ripping up and starting again from top to, do, to do very you think, bottom. Do you there. think he looks at I, Ten I Hag, though, Rob, and, and thinks, OK, I'm going to give this guy the chance? Or, or is some of what's happening now possibly affecting his decision? It's a great shout. And I think the latter. I think the latter. I mean... We know, we know recruitment's been... Mm. There's a huge article, by the way, long as. I mean, the, the athletics, great stuff, but there's, long, yeah, there's a huge yeah. article about all the recruitment. I mean, I, I've only... I, I skim, skim read it mm. a little bit because it's so long. But so many decisions of, was this John Murr to the club? Was this yeah, Eric Ten Hag? Yeah. They ratified it. No, that was OK. That was not OK. This was a bad decision. They went for Casemiro because of this. They could have gone for Declan Rice because they could spread his money out over a longer period of time because he's a younger player on a longer contract. So many bad decisions. All that being said, right... The manager, mm. wow, like, mm. shouldn't we be expecting more from him, Rob? So it mm. brings him, the longer this goes on, the, the more faith I think is getting lost with certainly the squad, yeah. probably the fans, most yeah. of the fans, you know, and people like us that are like, wow, even, even with all the, 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 yeah, the problems and weird yeah. recruiting, yeah. they should be doing better than this, um, you know, with some of the fees that were paid for some of these players. They must have some kind of ability. You've still got the Jaden Sancho thing, Rob. You've yeah. still got... Eric Ten Hag, that for whatever reason can't get Marcus Rashford back to his best. Yeah. What? 
Why? How? Mm. What? How is that happening? That's mm. the manager. I mean, we saw what he did last year. Yeah. Um, but this is a different season. And, and, and Eric Ten Hag can't get Rashford. He, was the, he papered over so many cracks last year with him in poor form. They're exactly what you might expect. So that, with Jadon Sancho, with other things that's happened, you know, with Johnny Evans playing in the Man United team in the Champions League, it, it, the, the decisions are Eric Ten Hag's. And he's going to be, the longer it goes on, I think it's looking worse and worse for him, mate. Robbie Musto, I'm, I'm, I want you to change your mood. Talk to me about a player who stood out for you oh, today I can. in this I can game. feel it coming. I can feel yeah, it. Give, give, me, give me your underappreciated performer of the week. Who's a little creative talent who could well, walk into Manchester United's <sighs> team now and make them better. Uh, Come on, give it me. Well, give it me. You know it is. I know. Well, it's, it's our man. It's our, it's our Brazilian. Brazilian magician for West Ham United, Lucas Paquetá, mm. a player that I, I, I fascinated with when he came to this league. When new signers coming, Rob, we always, both us, like, yeah. we, we look at a lot of video, mm. what they what they bring in, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> this guy's kind of silky. He starts for Brazil in their national team as a number 10 or the creative force. Started at West Ham United, Rob, a little bit slow. You know, like, expectations were high. It's David Moyes' team. It's the yeah. kind of little bit pragmatic, little bit defence first. He is, he is uh, maturing into a, a magnificent footballer. The assisting pass today with the outside of his left foot, beautiful for Jared Bowen. He's, he, he's worth any admission for any fan into a, into a stadium to watch Pakatar play. And... You know, you know, I'm going to say he's a Champions League player. You know that Man City Rob are interested yeah. in him. Um, but another example today, he got three assists the other day, didn't he? Three, you know, assists, it, it, three in, assists in the Wolves. last game. Three assists against Wolves. He gets the assist today. Yeah, Bowen, yeah. so he's got the they got the long passing awareness. Yeah. This little clip was a beauty. If anybody hasn't seen it, yeah. you've got to watch it on our on our, on our um, YouTube, yeah, our, our NBC YouTube channel. Um, yeah, that, that, that he's my underappreciated performer. We all know the West Ham fans appreciate him, Rob, but I'm yeah. just saying to the world of football, the world of the Premier League, this guy is really, really top draw. And I reckon in, in one or two years, mm. he's going to be at a club when everybody's going to say, wow, he's great. We're just getting out there right now, my friend, that this guy's a special let, player let, and he's underappreciated because he's a top-level guy. Great shout. Let, let me stop you there. For, if I'm a West Ham fan, I'm a West Ham mm. ambitious. I've got Kudos, I've got Bowen, I've got Pacato, I've got Alvarez... Mm. I got Ward Prowse. I got the basis of something not bad there, Rob. You know, can can yeah. can we not oh, yeah. show some ambition and want to help keep on the? He's the kind of guy you build a team around and and, and, and see if we can make it work. Remember, they they're virtually playing without a centre forward. Jared Bowen's doing a brilliant job, but he, his main role he could yeah. be coming from those wide areas. Yeah, but he could. But don't, don't you like what they're doing now? Don't you oh, like, like it? Don't you like doing, it? But the, I just the Bowen's put, up front. Put a centre forward in. plays wide right on that left foot. Put a 15-goal centre forward in there. Bowen will still get your goals from the outside. I mean, he's, he's got many. He moved yeah, out there. Maybe, he moved maybe, out there today. Yeah, maybe in different. In a different. I, I just kind of like. I like mm. what I'm seeing at the moment, Rob. And uh, yeah, it's Ward Prowse sure. that was a, was a little number ten today, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. And. You know, the way that Pakatar comes in. See, Pakatar can play anywhere. So mm. if he plays wide, he's still going to come inside and do his thing. I kind of sure. like Kudus on the, on the right-hand side, yeah. Jared Bowen up front. Um, but back to, your, back to your point, yeah, I mean, I, the, the, it's funny club, West Ham United, Rob. They've made some pretty bad signings that, that, mm. that didn't work start yeah. of last year. I think Skamak is one that comes to mind, a couple of others. And then there are other ones that have been spectacularly good. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what it's going to come down to with Pakatar, Rob, and, and we've seen this. Who's the other guy at West Ham? We, if a player gets the gets the gets oh. the little whispers that Poyet, the Real Madrid Poyet, Poyet, or, or, or Poyet, Poyet, yeah. it went to Marseille, yeah, yeah, that's that's the other one. Yeah. So if he's turns the sort of lad he is, he might mm. say, you know what, like, come on, West Ham, I, you know, I've loved my time here and I appreciate you bringing me into the league, but I want to move on. Or he might, he might. West Ham's a pretty cool club, Rob. Yeah, Every, I think everybody knows club, that. Yeah. It's a big old stadium. Mm. He might, you know, and I, I, I sometimes feel with Brazilian players, they can really get attached to the yeah. club that they're at. If he gets yeah. attached to West Ham United, then maybe they can have him and they can enjoy him for the next few seasons. I just would, would go on the, he's probably going to want to go to the play in the Champions League, mate. And I, yeah. I don't know if West Ham United are going to get there in the next few seasons. No, we'll David Moyes, we trust. He'll get him in the Champions League, don't <clears> you worry, my friend. They're up to, up to sixth, aren't they, I think? To, to, uh, yeah, as things stand, up to yeah. sixth. Yeah, sixth in the league. So, ticking along nicely uh, and doing well in Europe. Um, let's move it to Villa Park, Rob. Um, 
Aston Villa, Sheffield United, we're working on this game. Villa with a win, chance to go top. Uh, Sheffield United with a win, chance to come off the bottom. Mm. So, contrasting fortunes for both teams. But we saw a Chris Wilder-inspired Sheffield United that made it difficult for Villa to play the football they wanted to play, blocked things off certainly down the central area of the pitch, with five at the back, four midfield, and Cameron Archer was the lone striker. Um, they rode a bit of luck, Rob. They got themselves ahead and could have easily gone on to get all three points. Late goal from Zaniolo uh, for Villa. Um, you know, lovely ball from mm. Louise and, and good run from Zaniolo. But I thought Chris Wilder and his team came out with a lot of credit from that game because we weren't really sure. Haven't we? We're not really seeing too many solid Sheffield United performances. But given that he, you know, he hasn't been mm. in the place long, he'd set his team up. I thought a lot of credit mm. for Chris Wilder. Mm. Tons, tons of credit, Rob. Really surprised me. Really mm. surprised me. That was a that was as good a a, a organised defensive kind of setup against any good side that you're going to see for a long time, Rob. The five four one. Of course, we we have the tactical camera. We yeah. we saw that it stayed compact. It's you know there was no gaps between. They were pretty narrow. It was a brilliant, brilliant defensive performance. And I was surprised, Rob, because the lineup you had some of their more talented players, your Mcatees, uh, yeah. not starting in the game. Who else wasn't? McBurney wasn't starting. Yeah. Harmer. Uh, Harmer. Hamer, the midfield yeah, player. Yeah. Harmer. Harmer. Mm. He would, so they, they had, you know, and I thought, oh, wow, he's playing some young lads. Uh, LaRussi well, at left Well, they play back, Luton, they don't they? Well, Boxing Day. Playing as well. you, you mentioned they were playing they play, Luton. And I just you, thought... You wondered whether he was saving yeah. them for that. Yeah, he's like, we'll save, the, save, the, save our better players for a game that we must win against mm. Luton. So, mm. wow. It, 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 you know, if that was the... Well, if that was the case... Um, the young player, the young players that came in did an amazing job, and, and they made it difficult for Villa. And we yeah. all expected Villa Rob to go on. Mm. There's one thing, mate, that we've, you know, I just think about it when I drove home from the studio yesterday. Like when there's so many times now where it's not, it's not lucky or a coincidence that when yeah. you expect a big team to roll over a team, mm. that, you know, that's not expected, it's so often not the case. It's so often, and 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 teams often lose those games. Yeah. And it's not. You know, it's just, and they've all done it. I mean, you could throw off some Man yeah. City shocking defeats yeah. in the past. It happens against anybody. Mm. Um, and fair play to Villa, Rob, for, for, for sticking in there. And Zaniolo, the, the Italian, comes in there and attacks the cross really, really, yeah. really, really well. A bit of a Robbie Earl attack into the box and Thank headed you. into the back Thank of the you, net. My but one of yours, that, mate. Yeah. Um, um, so, a credit, credit to, real credit to Sheffield United. And you ain't going to win every game, Aston Villa, mm. even though. Me, you, everybody, I think, that looked at that game would think they should go on and, 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 and brush them aside. They didn't. That was mm. credit to Wilder's tactics and the players of Sheffield United rolling up their sleeves and putting in a, a brilliant, brilliant performance, I thought. Yeah, and ahead of uh, the game today, obviously Villa were in second place. And I said, what a difference it is for Villa fans to be disappointed to be second when we've seen some football where they just yeah, you know, know. stuck in the league by, by the odd point and, and struggled down, you know, in the Stephen Gerrard mm. days. Uh, very different ambition, very different belief and, and expectations starting to grow and that's what happens when things... Are, I think you made the point, Rob, also that teams are going to be more respectful of Aston Villa. They're going to set up mm. and, and be different. Mm. You know, Newcastle found that a little bit, I think. You know, you start doing well and going up there, then teams look at you in a, in a different way and mm. what the Man United yeah. and the Man Cities and the, the Liverpools have had in the past starts to, starts to happen. Rob, we did it. I mm. did it. I lived that for years yeah. in the Premier League. You know, our club, but both of us, really. Yeah. You, you know, when, when a big club's come to town or you go into Anfield or or uh, Stamford Bridge or, you know, the, the Old Trafford, you know yeah. what you're going to face mm. and, you, and you roll your sleeves up. This is one of the big boys. We've got to be at it today and we've got to give everything and you often do and you often get results. So, no, I think that is very, very pertinent yeah. for this game and well done. Again, well done. And, um, you know, I, I, we just didn't see that one coming. But but uh, they'll go again. Emery was, was still firing yeah. at, after I saw his interview and he was still fired up and, you know, he was pretty pragmatic about it and saying you can't win them all and stuff like that. Um, no, but uh, they'll go again and um, we'll be ready for that on, on Boxing Day. Let's take you to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Um, I didn't watch this one particularly. Um, it was in that 10 o'clock window. I know you, you had your eye on this one a little bit more, didn't you? Tottenham Everton? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, give, uh, give, give us a summary right, of, just... of Ange Ball. And I saw some scenes at the end. It looked like they were hanging on a little bit. Uh, Vicario coming up with a couple of good saves <laughs> and Everton pushing forward. And Sean Dyke's yeah. not happy with the fourth officials. 
Oh wow, yeah. So yeah, I mean, first off, Tottenham team was you know like like teams at the moment. Um, Basuma was suspended, Rob. Um, so Oliver Skip played in midfield. You yeah. doggy the left back has done so well was out as well, and you've still got Madison and, and Van der Ven. Brennan Johnson's starting to look very comfortable in the team, Rob. Made a really nice assist yeah. for the man of the man of the match really for uh, Tottenham is Richarlison, and his his return to form is is pretty amazing, pretty impressive. Um, the coolness of his finish from from uh, Brennan Johnson's cross was was so so like a player that's a striker that's confident doesn't doesn't try and blast the ball just passes it into the back of the net yeah. and it's often happens with Tottenham Rob they started really really well mm. really really good Kulusevski is such a such a good player um, they had one injury I think uh, Romero in terms of things to watch out for oh. Romero went off I think he, we saw him with an ice pack on his mm. sitting on an ice pack so maybe a hamstring problem or something like that that's a concern given yeah. Van der Ven's out as well and Eric Dyer then comes into the game Rob and and to be fair to Tottenham, or what, to, be to be fair to Everton after that, I mean, Everton started slowly, right? Mm. They started slowly. They conceded the two goals. Xiomen Son scores a second goal in the first 20 minutes, 2-0 two, two down. Yeah. After that, Everton played really, really well. There's a couple of reasons for it. Um, Andre Gomez, Rob, came into the game, yeah. I think it was around 25 minutes. Um, now, we haven't seen him for blimmin' months. No. Like he, 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 at times for Everton, way, way back... Looked really, really good. He looked mm. really good, Rob. Andre Gomez looked a million dollars. He scores a great goal later on in the 83rd minute, but not just his goal. I'm not, I'm not talking about him just because of his goal. Yeah. He's another player coming into this Everton team that is going to make them better mm. because there's better players around now. He makes them a little bit better again. Everton yeah. were excellent, Rob. After mm. that first shaky, slow first 20 minutes, they were really, really good. And Vicario was busy, busy, busy goalkeeper throughout mm. the game. Throughout the game, who's making saves throughout? And Tottenham, as 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 it is a calculated gamble, yeah. and that's Ange Ball. This was another Ange Ball game, Rob, where mm. they looked like scoring, particularly <laughs> early on, yeah. but really looked like conceding. And you know they had a few close calls. I didn't think they were going to get three points, Rob, because Everton were finding holes, playing through them. God, it, it, yeah, it's Dan the June way it is. One, it's a calculated they hit the, hit the crossbar, hit the goalie, just one of those goal yeah, decisions. So systems. on that one. Yeah, but there was there was a flag that went up. Oh. So if that ball goes over the line, then we're we're, we're sitting down looking at VAR because there's two players in offside position. I actually oh. think Dan Juma was not offside, yeah. but the flag did go up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but no, but it was um, yeah, yeah. It was you know they cut they cut Everton cut through Tottenham. Yeah, more than than you would think they really did. And um, I mean I can't say Spurs are looking to get three points because I love the way they play and yeah. it's a gamble that they take and they. And they, 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 they know they're going to give up opportunities, which they did. But they come out on top. It's a great. They, they had a great reaction. They've won a few games now, haven't they? they got, they're in yeah, great got, form. There's three wins on a spin yeah. after a shaky spell. Yeah. Come through that shaky spell and sit fourth in the table, which I'm sure at the start of the season, you said come Christmas, you'll be fourth in the table. Spurs fans would absolutely have taken yeah. that, mate. So, yeah, good win for, for mm. Tottenham. Um, but I think also it's proof, Rob, that Everton are going to be OK, aren't they? I mean, they've taken 10 points off them and I know they'll appeal and see what they can about, but they're going to be OK. They're, they're, I just don't feel they're going to get oh, drawn into they're going to be absolutely fine. Hmm. No, well, I, I had a good feeling about Everton, Rob, yeah. right from the start, with the signings that they made, more time with Sean Dyche, a full pre-season. I, I like Jack Harrison, he nearly scored today. And now, I tell you, Andre Gomez, mm. and I'm sure Everton fans are touching wood, if he stays fit, he, he makes their midfield better. Yeah. Garner played in a higher position because Decore was out, Rob. Mm. Um, Everton have got some players. Dwight McNeil's playing well. You know, Branthwaite was back in looking strong, looking, I mean, he, you see the stories this week about all sorts of big clubs offering yeah. big money for this yeah, guy, yeah. Branthwaite. Mm. Um, but Six at the moment, boxing, Everton yeah. are, get, are getting together to. a very nice team. The ginger yeah. Mourinho never in doubt, my friend. Oh, he's doing it. We, he's we doing trust. the bizzo. Let's go to Kenilworth Road, mate, because Luton were facing Newcastle, a Newcastle team that lost three uh, away games on the bounce, a Luton team that at home have given... Uh, the bigger teams trouble the likes of Arsenal and Manchester City but usually come out the wrong side of things emotional um, game with the Tom mm. Lockyer incident from, from last week and back in front of the home fans Newcastle fans showing their support before the game Rob Edwards saying to his, his players you know 
important that we think about Tomba and important that we focus on, on the football as well, which they did, Rob. And Luton Town get away with a 1-0 win against Newcastle. Some might say not a bad time to face Newcastle out of the League Cup. One or two players not in form and obviously the injuries just keep piling up. But it's, it's a win, it's three points and just what Rob Edwards and, and Luton wanted. Yeah, I mean, this is the window. So I didn't see that. I wasn't watching this game. I watched the Tottenham game at this point. I watched the highlights. I watched the goal. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a blibbing shocker when you see that, isn't it? Luton yeah. Town one, Newcastle United nil. I think you're right. I think it is a good time to play Newcastle. I think they're in the middle of recovering from a very difficult run of games where the same players played the same every game. It seemed like, but that's still that's still a headline. And it was on the cross, wasn't it? Was it a set piece there, goal? Yeah. Yeah, I came and got flicked on. You know, that, that's, uh, by Ross Barkley flicks it on. On the back post, ahead of the back post. Townsend gets in at the back post and scores a goal. I think it was one of those days, as I was watching the game, I wasn't watching this one fully. I was watching the Bournemouth, uh, Forest Bournemouth game. But um, every time I mm. looked up, you see sort of uh, Newcastle pushing forward. It was interesting, Rob, actually in the game, um, I think around 25 to 30 minutes in, Isaac was on the bench, Wilson started, Miley was in midfield. He took off Miley and put both Isaac and Wilson uh, up top. It was like, you know, he decided yeah. he, he wanted more attacking flair. And I, mm. as, you watch, as I'm watching the mm. game and keep thinking, I, I'm thinking to myself, they're probably going to get one Newcastle somewhere along. Something's going to give, somebody's going to yeah. create something. But the longer the game went on, the more belief Luton had and the more mm. frustrated at, at times Newcastle became. And in the end, Rob, they hung on for, for mm. a really good victory and a really important three points. Mm. It really is. I mean, them, Luton at, at home, yeah. obviously is, is their way out of this. Mm. This is their way out of the relegation zone. Now, that Rob, little old stadium. Mm. Yeah, the, the way. And they play I mean, Sheffield I, United, isn't it? What over a big shoulder. game that is. Sheffield United. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. chance to, to a put a little game. run of games together. And I'm going to go, my friend, to yeah. my underappreciated performer of the week. He's a Luton Town player. His name Andros Townsend. He started this season in the commentary Ooh. box, doing an absolutely pretty good job of it. And two Robbies better watch out because I think he's, he's heading for one of our seats. Um, but at, what I think he's 32 years of age. I was thinking there's still a bit of football in him, really. I hope he doesn't sort of give it up too early and turn to the micro. There's plenty of time to get into the media. Um, and I believe he's got he's yeah. on a short-term contract. Now, my understanding is the contract runs till, say, January. Um, I'd like to feel that Luton are talking about extending that, that to the end of the season. <laughs> because otherwise, I'm telling you, his phone will be ringing. Uh, he looks fit. He looks yeah. focused. We've seen it at Palace. We've seen it at Everton. He scores spectacular goals. He works hard. He looks like he, he's a good sort to Great have around. Chicken feet soup, mm. apparently, is, is the, the, the oh, reason yeah. for his, his form and back to all the nutrients in chicken feet he, he's talking about. He looks at his diet now and he, he, he's really, really focusing in, in on his football. And I think he's one of those players, Rob, who many teams could do with... He, he's happy to be in the starting lineup. Looks like one of them is a good egg if he isn't in. He'll come on half-time or in the second half if needed and do his bit. Can play either side, right and left side. Got a nice personality about him. And he's one of them players that can get forgotten a little bit in, in Premier League. He's not a star. He's not a star maker. He's never going to win player of the month. He's probably never going to you know, in play, uh, be in a PFA team of the year. But a good, important, honest professional who's, who's had a good career, made the most of what he's got. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, Rob, where this is, a, this is good for both, right? A mm. fair play to Luton Town for giving him a chance back in the Premier League. Because when you get, you know, you get kicked out of a club or you get no new offers and stuff and, and the phone doesn't ring and you think about media, but fair play to Luton Town. Mm. And I hope that the, the two stay together because, like, if you just said it right there and if his contract's kind of got options to, to leave in January, yeah, I mean, that's like in a week's time, less than that. So I, I'd like those two to continue together. So... Mm. I, It'd be, I mean, I'd be amazed if that doesn't happen, given what he's yeah. done right now. It's a good shout, Rob. I mean, that, this, this, this literally is the point of this, underappreciated. Yeah. A guy that's basically playing, you know, with a few months contract, hoping to, to impress to get more. So, yeah, he, he is underappreciated if he's performing well, scoring goals in the Premier League. He will be absolutely fine. Just, just as you were talking there, Rob, another player, I think, for Luton that, that um, is rebuilding his career is Ross Barkley. Yeah, it's a good And shout. Ross Barkley mm. looks... I mean, he looks really good and looks like he's just, you know what? This is kind of my last chance at yeah. the big time of playing in the Premier League and being an important midfield player. God, I remember watching him play for England, Rob. 
years ago. And I remember thinking, wow, what a player. Mm. What a player this guy is. When he's dribbling past. I don't know, it was in, down in Florida. It was a friendly game before yeah, the World Cup, Yeah, it was an England Cup, game in, in Miami, looked, wasn't it? I always remember you coming back. It was in like Miami. Drooling over him, yeah. I said Ross Park. <laughs> I know. It, it, to see him live was... I remember... I never forget it because we had a massive storm and we all had to... We had to the game was flipping post... Well, not postponed, but it was um, stopped. Yeah. We had a delay of about half an Rain hour or something for the storm to go over. But anyway... Yeah, but fair play to Luton Rock, mm. picking up these players, yeah. you know, that, that have been, they are underappreciated, they've mm. been cast off a little bit, and I love to see these, particularly these two, yeah. showing what they can do in the Premier League. So it's a, it's a good shout, and Luton Town, bless you. Well, it's an mm. amazing story. Out there, there, it's, it's, it's incredible, Rob, one of the just lowest on that budgets. Po- that point, and you, you just brought up something, something I did want to mention today, and, and I thought, um, fair play to, to Rob Edwards, because he's a young coach who's taken on two big players, really, big personalities, probably, who've, Probably got you know mm. got more Premier League experience, but he believes in what's doing the right thing and getting them on side. And he's he's obviously got a good culture around the football club where they fitted. The other thing with Rob Edwards and, and it was in I was listening to the press conferences um, ahead of the games. Obviously we, we do our little bit of research and listen to the managers. And he said something that I thought was really important. It struck me, Rob. He said he's got a huge respect for um, Eddie Howe, and Eddie's like a bit of a role model for young English coaches who's gone in mm, at, at, yeah. at, at um, Bournemouth originally, you know, uh, learnt his trade, now got a chance at Newcastle. And it's important that these young English coaches like Eddie gets a chance with a big club, big eight club, the Newcastle who can go to Champions League. And Rob Edwards said he's inspiring me to, to want to do better. I thought it was a really interesting thing mm. that, you know, the two managers together, mm. that it is important that we have some English managers. You know, we all love pop. Potch and we love Pep mm. and we love Klopp and we love Ange Ball and all. But it's yeah, important yeah. we get some English coaches who are good thinkers, mm. clever, can keep teams in the league and, and prosper as well. And I just, I, you just reminded him that when you talked about uh, Rob Edwards and, and Luton mm. Town doing a good job. Mm. No, absolutely right. It's well said. And, and um, you know, the level of the Premier League right now and the tactical stuff that's going on in the league, it, it has to inspire and educate mm. coaches, Rob. Wh- yeah. Whichever level they're at right now. They're, they're seeing and learning some of some legendary coaches. We're so lucky, Rob, to to kind of get to, to analyse and to watch these coaches work with a different tactical stuff. I mean, he, you know, Ange Postacoglu's brought something yeah. different. Like, De Zerbi brought something different. Like, everybody. And, and Graham Potter was one of those yeah. guys, an English guy that that's a smart, thinking coach. And he'll be back in the Premier League, I reckon, pretty mm. soon after the new year when, when maybe mm. clubs start to make changes. So... Interesting point. Yeah. Um, of course, British managers, and there's still someone there doing a good job now. Of course, but Eddie Howe is a good example of, mm. you know, if you're smart enough and you're and you're and you can, you know, you learn, you learn which he has at Bournemouth that yeah. you can get to the top. So yeah, good shout. Okay, just uh, moving on quickly. Uh, in the, I think the whole M23 derby, isn't it? Because of Palace, Brighton, big derby to, to the two teams down there. Ended up one-one. Palace going ahead uh, through Jordan Ayew. Um and then Danny Welbeck coming on, some lovely header from Danny Welbeck that uh, brought Brighton level. Brighton had a couple of chances late on to maybe nick it, but one each um, keeps everything in that derby. And then Fulham v Burnley. Uh, Fulham scoring goals for fun at home generally uh, against a Burnley team that haven't been great. Um, but Burnley win this game 2-0. Odebert with a lovely finish, Rob. Uh, Odebert's playing on, on that left-hand side with Coley Osho out the team. Uh, he looks to be a bit of a player. He's got a nice finish. And, and then yeah. Sander Berger, your man, the big powerhouse in midfield, goes driving through and, and smashes mm-hmm. one in low. And mm-hmm. So it's a really important big mm-hmm. uh, three points for, for Burnley, who... To me, Rob, it's starting to look like, um, and sorry, I, we, we've, I forgot to go to um, Nottingham Forest, do what we'll talk about. It we'll looks to me like Forest, Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United look like where the, the three bottom teams are <laughs> going to come from. I know. I, I, listen, they're all, they're all improving. Yeah. They're all improving. And I know, you know, they had a bad start and it's difficult to, to rebuild in certain, particularly Burnley and Sheffield United's case, to, to rebuild a team with so many lone players going back to their clubs yeah. but it's a story it's a story and Burnley I know I know what the record is I know where they're at we spoke with Vincent Company. Yeah. he was saying we are improving mm. and I th- and I agree with him I think the football is getting better you know it's just getting the results in this league you never know you can't reliably predict any game in this league we've just seen that this yeah. weekend you just can't <laughs> and for them to go to Burnley you smashed somebody five the other week 
um, and win 2 0 is an outstanding result from Bernie. So, between Luton, between Sheffield United's yeah. performance and this one, yeah. those bottom three are not, they're not, they're not going to go without a fight. Yeah. And if you're not in Forest, or if you're Wolves, or if you're Crystal Palace, or if you're Everton, though Everton look, 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 look they've got a good mm. team, you know, you're going to be looking over your shoulder because these three, these three aren't going away. Um, Let's go back to, to Nottingham yeah. Forest, Rob, because Not in Forest, yeah. it was an incredible game of football. So you watched this I one. I was watching this um, game, yeah. I, I'm going to rant about... You give me your bit and I'm going to rant afterwards. Well, I'll tell you what, how it started. It started with two yellow cards for Willie Bolly. One, a silly challenge that I think you wow. accept. The second, a challenge that he wins the ball twice. There's a bit of contact with the player, gets yeah. a second yellow for it, which means a red. Because it's two yellows, can't go to VAR. Willie Bolly's off, so Forrest down to 10 men in the first half. Go second half, get themselves goals through Langer and, and Wood. But I have to say, uh, Bournemouth have a man bang in form. You talked about him earlier, Rob. I think it's 11 or 12 goals now in, in the mm. Premier League for Dominic Solanke. His... Yeah. Ability in the air and his technical heading is right up there with, with the best in the league. Uh, I think we've had him as underappreciated. I think you might have picked him a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, he is underappreciated yeah, because he's, 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 he's somebody good. he's got he's in that Ollie Watkins kind of mould for me. I think the next step up, he's good enough to mm. play there. You know, he's a young young player, didn't quite work for him. Um, at Liverpool back in the day, but um, hat trick for Dominic Solanke. I don't think you know it'd be remiss of us to, to move on without giving him a bit of credit. And in Riola, Rob keeps getting the mm. job done. You know, Forrest thought they got a mm. point. Solanke comes in with a late win and 90 mm. plus four minutes to give them uh, the win and, and all three points on the road. Not the start that Nuno would have wanted as uh, Forrest manager. And as you say, with teams winning down the bottom, Nuno needs to kind of get things going pretty quickly yeah. or else they could get caught up in it. Mm. They could. I've got to say, Rob, the Willy Bolly second yellow yeah. it is, a, is, a, is a shocker for me, Rob. And I know, I know you guys on the, on the air yeah. today kind of talked about it and, you know, we got, I, 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 I couldn't believe that that was given as a yellow card. Mm. I couldn't believe it. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an absolute... I don't want to say words like, that's a bad one, mate. That's yeah. a bad error. When you go to ground yeah. and you clearly win the ball and there's a little bit of follow-through. Mm. You know, are we at a point, Rob, where you can't do any type of slide tackle, yeah. even if you win the ball? I, I, I thought that was... And that changes the course of the game. Yeah, for sure. And I feel sorry for Forrest, the fans. I, I haven't seen as bad of that one as a long time. And you're right, Rob. You described it perfectly well. Second yellow card. You can't... VAR can't take a look at it because it's not a straight red, which they yeah. took like every single one of them. I thought that was a shocker. And by the way, Rob, just I'm thinking about it, the other one that was that was, that was was talked a lot about on social media was Yodegaard. Sorry yeah. to go back to the Arsenal yeah. one. Mm. Um, but I always interested when former players and pundits are kind of split... Uh, yeah. on something like that yeah. and there's a few people out there I know Stan Collymore was one I think mm. a few others that, that said that's a clear handball he's moved he his, his hand, hand to the ball yeah yeah. yeah. Um, my take on it um, was if you look closely and this is just my take his right leg his right foot slips away and both arms move in a reactive position because of the slip his, so his right his arm goes up to break the ball left, one of those ones I, yeah, it's just he slipped, and I think when you slip, you, you, and I think it, in slow motion, mm. it's really, really close yeah. for him to deliberately yeah. bat, pad the ball down from that. I, I, and, and I think when you look at the slip, his arm is going down as if he's going down, and then he he pulls it, but it just looks like a direct smack yeah. of the ball. But for me, it wasn't. It mm. wasn't. It was an accidental one as he slipped and his arms, both arms, by the yeah. way. So this, yeah. you know, it, it can't be del if both arms kind of move in the slip. Your take was the same, Rob, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was accidental. Yeah. And some, we also, I mean, it's away we from also his body. spoke to the PGMOL and asked for their VL, and they said right. exactly the same. And the, the hand wasn't in an unexpected position where it was hitting. It was in the act of falling Give. that his hand went down and hit his arm. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, in the yeah. end, it, it, it probably didn't matter as much as uh, Liverpool yeah. getting the equaliser. But, yeah, it, it was one of them that split people and went on. OK, yeah, my yeah, friends, we're going to wrap it up for, for match week 18 that lived up to all the billing. Fascinating fixtures at the festive times. Luton, Burnley won at the bottom. Arsenal, Liverpool and Villa drew at the top. While well, victories for Bournemouth, Spurs and West Ham ahead of Christmas Day. Look out for our next podcast. That's Thursday, that's December the 28th, when we'll recap a busy Boxing Day and the rest of Match Week 19. But for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty. Together with the two Robbies, thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. Happy holidays to you all. Ho, ho, ho. It's a good night for me.
and it's good night from him. Happy holidays. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.